Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Will you stand with me as we get ready to invoke the presence of the Lord this morning? Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the new thing that you'll do in this place on today, God. We come expecting your greatness, God. So we're asking that you'll meet us in this place with your power. We thank you for your favor and your kindness. But most importantly, God, we thank you for your love. Do something supernatural in this place today, and we'll give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together this morning. Said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. There's nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Come on, if you know it, will you sing it with me? Said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Said I searched all over find nobody I looked high and low still couldn't find nobody said nobody greater nobody greater nobody greater than you come on will y'all clap with me this morning the next part just to class said your name is above all names Said you're worthy of all I praise. Said mighty are the works of your hand. Oh, mighty are the works of your hand. Said your name is above all names. Said your our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God now come on like one big choir can we sing together said how great is our God Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Now come on one more time, let's declare this. You're the name above our name. Yes, 
Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. Now come on, if he's great and we know that nobody's greater, can we magnify him this morning? Come on, don't, don't sit down. Come on, don't sit down. You know it is Sweatsuit Sunday, sister. Uh, Cook is making her way up. She uh, she gonna bring Black Panther with her up here to stand next to her as they uh, share. He said he tired. Okay, all right. So uh, everybody stand against sweatsuit Sunday. As y'all know, every fourth Sunday we ask everybody to stand for just a few moments of exercise. Uh, not even a whole song, but a, a half of a song. And so if we can just do this, uh, we gonna stretch out all over the sanctuary. Those who are worshiping virtually, uh, we would encourage you to um, put the computer down, put the iPad down, put the phone down, do a little exercise. We all need to get our 10,000 steps in a day. Somebody ought to say amen. And all of us are failing except for Sister Cook. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, and so uh, we're going to do better. Uh, so come on, let's praise God for Sister Cook as she leads us uh, in our time today. Brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you back to life, back to the one that can make your next chapter your best chapter, hallelujah. How can it be that you love the most unlovable part of me?
could never be nation attached from generation to generation. May we please all stand, please stand for the reading of the scripture. Our scripture is taken from Matthew chapter 15, verse 21, 28. Jesus left the place and went away from the distract of Tyre and said of... But he did not answer her all, I mean her at all. And his dis disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. She said, yes, Lord, yet even though the dogs eat the crumbs that fell from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, when woman great is your faith, let it come to you as we wish. And her daughter and healed his sister. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Um, let me um, begin by thanking uh, Rev. Maria and all of the sisters who had a great time in the sisters' retreat. Uh, uh, they are uh, revived and renewed and restored, and I would encourage everyone. They're already taking names and numbers uh, now for next year. Uh, and so I want to encourage everyone to become a part of that effort. Um, uh, sunrise, prayer on the beach, uh, and prayer stations, and uh, uh, fun and fellowship. And so we are grateful for, uh, for their time together. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, let me encourage you uh, this Tuesday uh, to join us at Bible study at 7 p.m. this Tuesday. I uh, want to join us for Bible study. It's the last sister's Bible study for this, um, uh, for our sister's takeover on this Tuesday uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, don't forget about this Friday, our Harriet Tubman uh, um, movie. And those who are interested in going, see Reverend Andrea at the church. Also, this Thursday, everybody, uh, we want to have a packed parking lot this Thursday for our trunk or treat. Somebody come on let's put our hands together and praise God for the youth ministry. Uh, they've done great and wonderful and marvelous things uh, and my brothers and sisters let me ask all the persons in our Boy Scouts and our Girl Scouts and our Cub Scouts and Brownies all to stand we have some uh, I think 20 plus kids um, in our new troops 
And so uh, if you are interested in signing up, um, the meetings are on four Sundays immediately following the 10 a.m. service. Uh, so all you have to do is stay over. Uh, I think next month we're going to dollar up and we'll get us some wing stop and, uh, and uh, wait for these kids to have their fun and fellowship. Uh, and then we're going to go home. And so my brothers and sisters, every fourth Sunday immediately following the 10 a.m. service, it's not just for members of IT. It's a great opportunity to witness to someone uh, to become a part of, uh, of our Boy Scout troop, our Girl Scout troop, Cub Scouts, and Brownies. Come on, let's praise God for Brother Damal and Sister Jasmine leading those efforts. Amen. My brothers and my sisters turn to your neighbor and say, please don't forget about trunk or treat. Please don't forget about trunk or treat. You don't want to miss that. You do not want to miss that effort. Um, my brothers and my sisters, uh, let me uh, also encourage you. Can we praise God for our youth choir? We got some new persons and our new youth ushers. We praise God. We got some worshipers. Uh, lifting up hands. I saw Chase over there lifting up holy hands. I saw Jordan grabbing the mic, taking charge like her mom and her daddy. Praise God for their witness. Uh, and uh, we're just grateful for these young people leading us in worship uh, uh, all day from reading the scripture to singing. Come on again. Let's praise God and encourage them. Um, and we are grateful. Let me ask all of our first time guests if we have any first time guests in the house. Won't you stand? Uh, any first time guests? Anyone who's never been here before? All right. Looks like everybody's home, folk. Can we praise God for Sister Cook? Didn't she do an awesome job leading us? All right. Now I need everybody to stand up again. Everybody stand up again. Everybody stand up again. Go all over the church. Hug somebody you haven't uh, spoken to. I need you to also pull out your phone, see if you uh, see persons that you, I mean, pull out your phone. If you don't see persons you usually see, send them a text. Say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I miss you today in church. Uh, come on. God loves you. And then tell them, God loves you. And so do I. There's nothing you can do about it. Sister, uh, uh, Sister Tara Brown, stand up. She is the Tara Brown. Um, if you are interested in preparing a Thanksgiving basket, or uh, this year we have the option 
if you would just cash app seventy dollars that would take care of everything including the turkey that take care of the the everything a person would need for a thanksgiving basket if you don't want to go shopping just cash app seventy dollars but i need you to give your name to sister tara brown and your phone number at the church that's just a tar brown over there for those who worship in virtue if you email the church the emmanuel temple dot org uh, and then you can cash out dollar sign the emmanuel temple um, and just put in the notes we would uh, be so appreciative of your efforts as we're going to be a blessing to as many families as we can help provide a thanksgiving meal Come on, won't you put your hands together and give God some praise. Now, so Keisha, if you could find that slide where it says times to call the pastor, uh, that, that times to call the pastor, uh, that, that I think there's a slide that you put together. Here are times when you need to call the pastor if you're going through these kind of challenges. Um, these are the times to call the pastor. So if you need a Thanksgiving basket, it's not the time to call someone else when you can simply call the pastor and nobody else will know about it but just me and you somebody ought to say amen that's why you have a what pastor turn to your neighbor and say that's why you have a pastor that's why you have a pastor that's why you have a pastor now don't say you need a Thanksgiving basket and we see you at Walmart shopping the next day somebody ought to say amen uh, there's a difference between needs and want somebody ought to say amen uh, turn to your neighbor and say for real for real there is a difference there is a difference there is a difference alright my brothers and sisters it's offering time come on won't you put your hands together and give God some praise okay maybe y'all didn't get paid this week I'm going to stand on this side of the pulpit alright it's offering time come on won't you put your hands together and give God some praise um if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. The ushers would be glad to give you one. Praise God for these youth ushers. They are doing an outstanding job. Uh, as you know, there are several ways you can give back to the Lord's house. Uh, our cash app, dollar sign, the Emmanuel Temple, our church app, uh, our website, or church envelope. I want to challenge every person who is worshiping virtually. If you are being blessed by this ministry, won't you give back? to this ministry uh, I, I, often I send texts to members and say they're worshiping virtually but I, I need to know you worshiping virtually um, I need to know you worshiping virtually uh, I need to know you worshiping virtually uh, it's good to worship virtually you you know uh, I'll tell y'all this funny story um, brother Justin I had a friend uh, who uh, in college who would always come over to our house and eat for free and never brought nothing he knew at 6 o'clock pastor was going to be cooking I wasn't pastor then I was just Jay White cooking turn to your neighbor say thank God for the hookup in college uh, somebody knows what I'm talking about uh, and so I, I, I don't want us eating for free and not being a blessing because God has blessed us and so I want to challenge everybody if you're not a tither to become a tither today I want to challenge everyone uh, to become a recurring giver what does that mean that simply means every time you get paid it automatically debits your card I want to challenge you to do so you all know the great and the wonderful and the marvelous things we do um, for people all over the world somebody ought to say man you know how we are a blessing to people all over the world you know how the gospel is being spread now in Canada with a small group uh, or the agro group of persons simply from Canada and so my brothers and sisters uh, we need everybody turn to your neighbor and say that means you too that means you too uh, turn y'all didn't do it turn to the other neighbor and say uh, that means you too you were the wrong neighbor uh, everybody 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 and so whatever you're going to give today come on let's put it in our right hand let's lift it up to the Lord uh, you know what I'm going to say if today is not your day praise God that Friday is somebody ought to just shout coming 
coming it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming let's pray our lord and our god we thank you for this wonderful privilege to give back to you and so god take these our gifts of tithes and offerings press them down shake them together and run them over so that your kingdom may come here on earth as it is in heaven and god convict those God who have not trusted you with the tithe yet convict those God who you continue to keep blessing and they continue breaking your heart by not trusting you with the blessings you've provided for them God move on their hearts right now God and remind them God that you've been so good you've been better than good so many doors you've opened so many ways you've made so many doors you've opened so many ways you've made so many doors you've opened so many ways you've made so many doors you've opened so many ways you've made God when we think about how much you've done for us the price you paid for dying for our sins how you extend grace over us each and every day God rebuke the spirit of stinginess in us that we will not trust you with the tithe and give an offering God for those who worship in virtue to move on their hearts right now God that they may sow into this ministry as they've been eating from this ministry for free we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you in Jesus name we pray somebody ought to say amen come on and we know that God loves a God loves a God loves a come on everybody who has not given it won't you stand face the outside of walls won't you come down and place your gifts of tithes and offerings in these offering baskets everybody stand face the outside walls brothers and sisters uh, let me uh, continue to ask that you would keep several of our members lifted in prayer sister Yvonne Thompson's mother passed funeral is going to be this Saturday at 11 a.m. here at the church we're asking all those who can and will to join uh, this family in this home going celebration um, let me ask that you would continue to keep uh, brother Robert Moore uh, he has a brother who is gravely ill along with a niece and we're asking that you would keep them lifted in prayer uh, we're also praying for uh, our our brothers and our sisters in the Bahamas and in Haiti uh, who are still uh, fighting to continue uh, to just to survive somebody ought to say amen uh, my brothers and sisters it's always good to see brother Tyrone pressing his way in spite of his ALS to church I ask that you would keep lifted and lift him lifted in prayer it's good to see Sister George A. Raphael. Son had open heart surgery. He's recuperating. Come on, let's praise God for their witness. 
Um, let's continue to keep uh, Sister Angela Hyla's mother in prayer. Let's continue to keep Sister Karen Alcinder uh, and Sister um, Jennifer Williams, all who are battling sickle cell, and her son uh, lifted in prayer as well. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, I'm going to simply ask that you would come make your way at this altar and come whisper a word of prayer. You just need a quiet time, just you and God. Uh, won't you come and whisper a word of prayer? going back I'm moving ahead I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you all things are made new surrender my life to Christ I'm moving moving forward oh forward I'm moving forward say it forward I'm not going back I'm moving ahead I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you all things are made new surrender my life to Christ moving forward oh forward I'm moving moving forward yeah forward oh cause you made all things new yes you make all things new and I will follow you forward yeah you make all things new yeah you make all things new and I will follow So we 
thank you new mercies and we thank you new joy and we thank you new love and we thank you new grace and we thank you new joy and God even though our circumstances may not have changed at this moment we just praise you because you've already made us new God in Christ Jesus, we, we thank you, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. And we stand on the truth that you are the one who makes all things new. And the truth that you're the one who can never fail. And the truth that you are God all by yourself. And the truth that you're a way maker. And the truth, God, that you're a heart regulator. And the truth, God, that you're a healer, Lord. And the truth, God, that it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. And the truth, God, that no weapon that's formed against us shall be able to prosper and the truth God that though the, the wicked may be with us God that they cannot overtake us because greater is he that is in us ah, than he that is in the world so God we thank you for being that God that God that God the God the one true and living God we create we create we, 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 we thank you. We, we, we magnify you. We, we adore you. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. We lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We lift you up, Lord. Standing on the truth that if you be lifted up, you will draw. If you be lifted up, you will draw all souls unto you. So we lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus the Christ, our Lord, Son of the living God. We lift you up in this house. We lift you up in our hearts. We lift you up in our hallelujah. Blessed is the name of Jesus. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, and we praise you with gratitude in our hearts. We praise you with gratitude in our hearts. We praise you with thanksgiving in our hearts. And we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. So we're going to praise you even more. We're going to praise you even more. We're going to be even yet undignified as we lift up your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, God, and as we come to this preaching moment, we are excited for what you're going to do in us, through us, among us, as your healing goes forth, as your salvation goes forth, uh, as your deliverance goes forth. We, we pray, God, that your Holy Spirit just do it like he want to do it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Let the people of God shout hallelujah. Let the people of God say amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you aren't already standing, if you just sat down, just stand back up. Because we're going deeper, we're going deeper, we're going deeper. We're going higher, we're going higher, we're going higher. Join me in reading the word of God as recorded in Hebrews Hebrews 11 verse 31a
Listen now for the word of the Lord. Thank you. Faith. Somebody shout faith. Faith provided a way of escape for Rahab the prostitute, avoiding the destruction of the unbelievers. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us shout thanks be to God. You may take your seat. Share with your neighbor, neighbor, O oh neighbor, from fallen to faith to favor. From fallen to faith to favor. As we continue this journey through the Bible and we're looking at the wild women of the word, I have a few questions I want to ask. What's your identifier? What characteristic or description or attribute are you known by? What facet, what asset, what liability are you known by? We live in a world where reputation can make you. We live in a world where reputation can break you. Just let one label, one lie, get attached to you. And before you know it, you look up, and that's what people start to use as your identifier, your nickname behind your back, uh, the shorthand description that many times you can hardly get rid of because that's who they say you are. And it ain't always cute. Matter of fact, many of us have had identifiers that are downright embarrassing, shameful, disgraceful now if it ain't true maybe you can hold your head up straighten your back shake off the shame maybe if it ain't true you can roll up in the spot anyhow knowing what the folks say about you but because you know it ain't true you stroll through loud and proud head held high with a jimmy crack corn and i don't care attitude but if it's true, Lord have mercy. If it's true, when, when folk call you out of your name, if it's true, help me, Jesus. Lord have mercy. It's one thing when they attach something to you that ain't true. But it's a whole nother thing when you're caught red-handed, when you've made your bed, and they caught you lying in it when the chickens come home to roost in your house it's a whole nother thing when your identifier when the issues that they call you by and use to call you out of your name are true Rahab had an identifier can you imagine if your identifier ended up in the Bible Rahab, somebody ought to just praise God right there. Her identifier was true, and she's in the Bible. Hallelujah, somebody. That ought to bless somebody right there. Rahab had an identifier, and all these thousands of years since, Rahab still has an identifier. It has never gone away. Rahab's identifier has had many, many synonyms. And she's never been able to shake the description, harlot, prostitute. There are some other names I'm not going to call because the children are present. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When folk were calling Rahab out of her name, they were telling the truth. Rahab's dramatic story is found pastor in Joshua. She lived in an exotic foreign location that was like 825 feet above sea level, a place called Jericho. And, and, I'm sorry, that's below sea level, so it was the lowest city in the world at that time. And, and if you're a Bible reader, you'll remember that Joshua had sent two spies to secretly spy out the land that God was sending the Israelites in to take over, Jericho. And, and the Bible says that, that when the spies rolled up into Jericho, they stayed in the house of a prostitute named Rahab. 
There it is. Make no mistake, she was a woman, according to the NLV, who sold the use of her body. It's biblical truth, y'all. It's in the book. Uh, we can't clean this up. We can't look the other way. We can't pretend that she was really just an innkeeper. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to pass judgment on Sister Rahab. Sister Rahab had learned from the world that she lived in that sometimes a sister's got to use what she got to get what she wants. She was a Canaanite woman, y'all, not an Israelite. So she didn't come from the good folk who had claimed our God. She lived in a ruthless society where women were devalued. Male oppression ran rampant and usually there was a man in the mix somewhere as a provider. But, but the burdens of life fell on Rahab. The bills, the babies, the aging parents. When the burdens of the family and the extended family fell on a sister, somebody knows what I'm talking about, Rahab knew what what all that was about that was her circumstance uh, no sister in her right mind wakes up and says hmm I think I'll go start turning tricks I think I'll go start slinging rocks robbing folk check kiting overeating drugging etc Rahab had learned from the world that she lived in I said from the world that she lived in sometimes a sister's got to use what she's got to get what she wants uh, and that's what led her to her identifier and folk calling her out of her name uh, but don't forget our text because it tells us another truth about Rahab Come on, everybody who has an identifier, everybody who calls folk by an identifier, there's other truth to the story. And, and I have said to many that I talk to, we need to be careful that we don't make caricatures out of people. You know, that's when we take one characteristic and blow it up real big. Because all of us are more than that one thing that somebody think they know about us. Well... Rahab is important for us today because Rahab's broken didn't begin and it didn't end in her being bankrupt forever. She was broken in the beginning, but she didn't end up being bankrupt forever. And I need a sister in the house who's got an identifier issue. I need a sister in the house who's got, got background baggage. I need a sister in the house who's got a shameful story to hear me clear right now. Your beginning, let me break it down, your before, because some of us got some identifiers that got stuck on us before we were even old enough to know what was going on. Hear me now, your before, your beginning, your middle, and any other time slot in your story does not have to dictate your end. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, now, before, before, before you, before you shout, I, I need you to hold up because I don't want anybody to get brand new because the book says that there's nothing new under the sun. So it seems to me we've all one time or another done some stuff that we know good and well we weren't supposed to do. And I'm not just talking to the sisters this morning. I'm talking to everybody, everybody in here and everybody worshiping virtually. Now, now you don't have to testify. And if you're at home by yourself, just, you know, you don't even have to acknowledge it even to yourself. But we all know that if we call ourselves Christians, uh, we've got to admit that means we've got some stuff in us that's not supposed to be in us that's why we needed Christ hallelujah somebody we all have to admit that we are now as Christians new creatures in Christ but that means we got some old stuff that either has passed away or still needs to pass away and that simply means I love to say this that all of us come on let's confess all of us used to something all of us used to something all of us are ex something or another. Come on, glory to God, somebody. Used to be fast. Don't raise your, your don't put, put your hand down. Don't. Used to be loose. 
used to run stuff and people, uh, used to steal, uh, used to get high, uh, used to have a naughty by nature spirit, down with that OPP, uh, ex-liar, uh, ex-adulterer, ex-shoplifter, ex-drunk, uh, ex-pole dancer or wannabe pole dancer. Uh, but glory to God, uh, now I'm an ex used uh, because God Almighty has set me free. Uh, you may know my identifier, but the truth is there's a bunch of stuff you don't know. But I praise God that I'm a new creature and I'm an ex used because there's all kinds of stuff. Rahab, Rahab, I'm talking about Rahab, Ray, Rahab, I'm talking about Rahab. Rahab, say it, preach it with me, Rahab, R Rahab, Rahab went to the reset retreat, Lord have mercy, come on next year, come meet up, meet up with Rahab at the re reset retreat 2020, Rahab's story is a word for me and for any sister, all sisters and brothers who've ever gotten caught up in worldly things, caught up in worldly things, <laughs> Any sister who's ever gotten caught up in material things we thought had so much value. <laughs> Any sister who ever got caught up doing the evil that she doesn't want to do. Any sister who's ever gotten caught up not doing the good that she really wants to do. Any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled up with the desires of the flesh and the bondage of the sinful nature. Any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled in a yoke of a good smelling nice looking bald-headed chocolate black man sweet talking man any sister who ever got caught up and tangled up in the stronghold of cigarettes or, or sex or drugs or alcohol any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled up in parties and food and foolishness and fun and any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled up in the hell of bad credit card debt bounce checks late fees late rent and threatening calls from creditors any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled up in bad grief and whose morning has turned into madness mad at God mad at the world and just plain mad any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled up in the dangerous and destructive disobedience of messing around with another woman's husband any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled up up in the deadly sensual indulgence of overeating, binging, and unprotected sex, uh, and sex with too many partners at one time. Any sister who's ever gotten caught up and tangled up in the devil's snare of breaking the law, local, state, or federal, I tell you, the story of Rahab is for any sister, and for that matter, any brother, anybody who's ever found themselves caught up and tangled up, and, and you ended up being called out of your name this words for you the news the news you know you know how that is the, the news the, the news traveled quickly about the spies uh, coming to Jericho and, and they knew where they went now how you know anything about that place that very night that very night the king the king sent his own men to Rahab's house built into the walls of the city near the gate they say that the important men hung out at the gate and her house was built in the wall near the gate the king's men demanded that she bring out the spies, but she was, Rahab was too clever for them. She had hidden Joshua's secret agents beneath the stalks of flax drying on her roof. So she says, yes, the men came to me. She, she admitted that. Then she told a tale that talking about she didn't know where they came from and she didn't know where they went. But they left around dark, around dusk. So if you go on and run after them, you might be able to catch them. So in essence, Rahab told it a big fat one she told a lie yeah. yes she did but not like Sapphira who lied to God 
Instead, Rahab lied to the bad guys to protect the good men that God had sent her way. Now, I don't want anybody to leave up in here, anybody worshiping virtually, to leave this sermon saying that Reverend Maria said it's okay to lie. The devil is a liar. I'm not saying that. I ain't said that. What the text is showing us, though, is that this sister is changing. She was living dirty as if there were no God. But now she may be lying, but she's living into the truth of the true and living God. Now, that's a shout right there for a sister in the house this morning who will say, I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but praise God, I'm not where I used to be. And I thank him and give him glory that he's not finished with me yet. Please see the beauty of our God in the story of Rahab. Proverbs 15 and 3 says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place observing evil and good. Somebody ought to praise God for being the God who doesn't stop seeing us even when we're doing things that we got no business doing. And God never left Rahab to be a victim of her identifier. Hallelujah, somebody. She was chosen by God. Do you know in the midst of your identifier, you could already be chosen by God? That's why we better watch out who we are caricaturing because that person you talking about, that person you lying on, that person you gossiping about may be the very chosen person of God to being praised in God's for God's favor. I'll never forget when I was in seminary, they told us straight up early on, don't feel like this is a great uh, acknowledgement of your goodness that you've been called to preach. You're not here because you were so good and so perfect. Check the record. And the record includes God using people like David, Moses, Rahab, don't make me call the roll. Maria, thank you, Jesus. God never left Rahab to be a victim of her identifier. She was chosen by God. She was chosen by God to be rescued from certain death and to be included in the family tree of the very son of God. Somebody ought to praise him. Oh, praise him how he'll take you from fallen to faith to favor. Hallelujah, somebody. In Matthew chapter 1, it says, Solomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. And it shows up. Her name is in the list. That's why you shouldn't miss the begats, y'all, because there's, there's glory and there's blessing. And checking out the family line. Then she shows up in James. In the 25th verse, it says, in the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute. Do you see they didn't even drop it then? Hallelujah. Was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. Don't you know God can work it all together for your good? Somebody ought to praise him right now. He's a good God. Yes, he is. In our text, Rahab is mentioned as one of the members of the faith hall of fame. And that's because back in Joshua, when Rahab rescued the Israelite spies, she confessed, I know that the Lord has given this land to you. I don't care what your identifier is. If you can stand up and proclaim I know the Lord <laughs> he'll work it out <laughs> so stop right there how could a Canaanite prostitute know how could she know about the one true God how could this Canaanite prostitute outside of the covenant people how could she know about the one true God the only explanation is revelation hallelujah somebody <laughs> she knows some stuff just like all of us know some stuff even when we're in our mess we know some stuff about God by revelation because he won't leave us alone where we are and, she, and God had shown Rahab who he was and she had embraced the truth even though her circumstance 
had not changed. She embraced the God who is the change. It wasn't coincident that the two spies ended up at Rahab's house in that house of ill repute. God had plans for Rahab from the beginning of time before he knitted her together in her mother's womb. He had plans for Rahab and her name not only shows up in scripture thousands of years later her witness won her a spot in the faith hall of fame how's that for being somebody who's been set free indeed and that ought to help some sister here this morning Rahab shows me that even when I'm not where I'm supposed to be God is still in control God still has me on God's mind and God can still get to me Rahab shows me that even when I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, God is still in control. Even when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, God is still in control and he promises me that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called to his purpose. She was called to his purpose even before she knew she was called to his purpose hallelujah somebody Rahab makes a deal with the spies and her entire family is saved somebody ought to praise him cause you know sisters be having our whole family on our hearts and she made a deal with the spies and her entire family got saved her entire family set free and her liberation is a word in the house this morning for a sister who's got caught up I say it again in worldly things a sister who got caught up in some things you ain't that no business getting caught up in but you must realize my sisters that like the prodigal you can return home to who you are in Christ Jesus the beloved daughter of the most high God true and living God king of the universe and no matter how far you've strayed away no matter how far no matter how far no matter how much you've sinned and fallen short uh, I'm talking to everybody who's here and I'm talking to everybody who's not here if you haven't been here for a while and there's something that's hanging on your heart Rahab is here to show us how to go from go from from faith to fall into favor don't stop moving in the direction that God is sending you don't run away from the church even if the church or some of the people using your old identifier you need to step up in there like I don't care what you say I know who I was but I also know who I am and who I will be hallelujah somebody some sister needs to know and needs to let God's grace free you right now free you right now because if you can use anything Lord if you can use a donkey Lord if you can use anything Lord use me I know I'm not what I'm supposed to be but you've already called me and put my name in the Lamb's book of life so I know where I'm going because you're not a man that you should lie God you don't write my name and then erase it for some foolishness that happened down here glory to God I know where I'm going I know where I'm headed and my faith my faith can save my whole family when I wake up to who God has called me to be and then I can move from faith and walk in favor and folk looking at me crazy wasn't that the one wasn't that the one she preaching now wasn't that the one she preaching now wasn't that the one she preaching now wasn't that the one she's evangelizing now wasn't that the one she in church all the time now wasn't that the one she's a prayer warrior now wasn't that the one she's a dancer now dancing for the lord
Everybody standing all over the church. I need you to know. I need you to know. I need you to know. I don't care what they say. I don't care even if it's true. Matter of fact, when it's true, instead of hiding, why don't I just confess to the Lord, Lord, it's true. It's true. You knew it's true. I know it's true. Let me stop acting like it ain't true. Let me just get real with you. I know it's true. And that means I need you, Lord. I thank you that it's true. Ooh. I thank you that it's true. Because what's true about me that they use or try to use against me is my weakness. But you're telling me, God, that your strength is made perfect in my weakness. So let me stop walking around like I'm so strong all by my black woman, superwoman self and acknowledge mm -hmm, it's true. I am weak and I need my savior. That's the gospel. We were weak, lost, fallen, headed to hell, and we all needed a savior. We might as well tell the truth because it's the truth that shames the devil. I need you, Lord. And God, even when you save me, God, even when you use my transformation to bless my whole family and they get saved, Lord, even then, I still need you. I still need you because that identifier keeps following me. Thousands of years later, I'm still Rahab the prostitute. But I thank you, God, because you've used my identifier to show just how far you brought me from. I thank you, Lord, that just like my Savior, who was risen with wounds, nail prints in his hands and in his, in his feet, my identifier, just like those holes in his hands and feet, are a testimony to how far you brought me from and how your resurrection power would not leave me alone. Glory to God. Somebody needs to come as pastor comes and I pass him the mic tag team you're in we reset real good real good somebody needs to come and say Lord I've been fallen I got faith now and I'm gonna link up with you for your favor Everybody standing on your feet, my brothers and sisters. Can I tell you how God works? That God includes in his holy word the worst of the worst to remind us that there's nothing that we can't do that God's not going to forgive us of. Oh, I think I just said something right there. Isn't it by the grace of God that God used a prostitute to be in the lineage of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ? That simply says that no one is excluded. And so all heads bowed, all eyes closed. God, we thank you for being an inclusive God. No one is out of the ark of safety if they want to be there. God, we thank you that though there are some who doesn't look like us and some who, who do look like us say women could not preach or should not preach and they should stay in their place 
God, we thank you that you remind us in your word that the first preachers who heard the good news of the resurrection were women. The first people to proclaim that were women. God, we thank you for these preaching sisters. We thank you for this anointed vessel that you use today to remind us no matter how great our sin is, God still wants to use it to transform not only ourselves, not only the people who are in our house, but the entire world. Thank you, God. Now, God, move on someone's heart right now that they may hear and believe and believing might be saved. Move on someone's heart right now, whether they're sitting in the sanctuary or worshiping virtually, God, to fill out the form to come a part of this kingdom movement. God, God, uh, give someone license right now to make their space in front of their seat, their altar. Uh, to say, God, I'm weak. And God, that they may know, God, that those are the very words you've been waiting to hear. Because your word says, where we are weak, thou art strong. God, your word says that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so, God, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you, God, for the fruit that's going to be manifested from this word. For someone who's throwing off the shame of what folks say about them. For the people who are going to throw off the shame of how people have viewed them. For the people who are going to shake off the shame of how people have talked about them. God, that will remind themselves, if God be for me, then who can be against me? In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you believe that's your testimony, come on, put those glad hands together and give God some praise. Come on, if you're here in this house, if you're worshiping virtually, come on, won't you come down, let the church say amen. Uh, let the church say amen. God has spoken. Somebody ought to come, won't you come, won't you come. Say amen. Won't you come? Won't you come? One more time. Let the church say amen. Let the church. Won't you come? Won't you come? I want to be your pastor. I want to want to walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. Won't you come? God has spoken. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, as these ushers come and receive our gifts and mission. Uh, and didn't that sister priest today, she blessed us today. I got these new young ushers, my brothers and sisters. As you know, every Sunday we give and give submission. I want you to pull out your phone. I want you to do something radical today. Pull out your phone. Uh, go to cash out, dollar sign, the Emmanuel Temple. I want you to pray right now. I want you to pray right now. I want you to pray right now. I ask the Spirit to speak to you about what you should give to help feed six families who would not eat every weekend if it were not for us. I want you to pray about right now what you should give for the 80 plus children who are orphans in Haiti that we feed every month. I want you to pray right now what you should give for the homeless students who uh, get a birthday card from us every month. I want you to pray about what you should give. Uh, don't, don't, don't just reach for what you've been doing. I want you to pray about what you should give. Pray about what you should give. An offering for those who are in need. Just think about how good God has been to you. Your response to how good God has been to you is what you should give. Your response, your, your response, what you should give. Speak, Lord, your children are listening. God, whether we're seated in the sanctuary or whether we're worshiping virtually, God, Regardless of how bad things have been, some of us have figured out 
when all hell breaks loose, God, that you're the only thing that kept us together. And so, God, we want to be a blessing to someone who's in need. We ask it in Jesus' name. We pray. Let the church say amen. My brothers and sisters, the ushers are passing those baskets down. As you know, there's several ways. Give, offering envelope, church app, website, cash app, dollar sign, the Emmanuel Temple. I, I, I want to be a blessing. Somebody asks, can you ever give too much? And my response is, if you only knew how good God has been to me, if only understand that I never had to go to bed hungry. I might not eaten what I wanted, what it was there, but I didn't go to bed hungry. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, sometimes it was oodle and noodles. Somebody ought to say amen. I know somebody been to Black College and had a oodle for news party. Somebody ought to say amen. And it tasted like spaghetti uh, when you were hungry. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody had some spam. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody had some beanies and weenies. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody had uh, not even uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You just had jelly sandwiches. You didn't have no peanut butter. And the Lord has still been good to us. My brothers and sisters, can we praise God for all of the young people who are serving today, worshiping leaders, our ushers, our praise God for the choir, uh, praise God uh, for our greeters, praise God for our streaming ministry, praise God for the young people who are watching and who are streaming and who are operating in the PowerPoints ministry. Everybody standing on your feet. Now, don't forget, uh, soon as worship is over, um, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts are meeting in the children's church all right um, sister Angie said that um, some of y'all uh, were walking on the beach because y'all thought it was holy ground and you took your shoes off um, so they got your shoes that you left at the hotel from the sisters retreat um, and see Sister Tony Gibbs as soon as worship is over. Um, don't forget Thanksgiving basket, Sister Tara. Um, you, you, she needs your name. You want you give her cash if you don't have cash. I'll write a check um, to her. I mean to the church. Uh, she'll receive it. Seventy dollars will take care of everything. You don't have to go shopping. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Walmart.com delivery. Walmart.com delivery. Turn to the other neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, Target.com delivery. Target.com delivery. Turn to the neighbor behind you and say, neighbor, Instacart. Instacart. All these ways. Amazon. All these ways to get all of this stuff that we need to be a blessing to families in need. Uh, my brothers and sisters, turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, walk with God. God will walk with you. Talk to God. And God will talk to you. Listen to God. And God will listen to you. Point to him and say, love God. Because God first loved you. Why don't you put both your hands in the air and receive the benediction. Praise God for my mother sliding in church. Come on, let's praise God for uh, her being in the house. Why don't you put both your hands up. Uh, receive the benediction. Now to him who would present Rahab, John, Maria, Angie, Willard, Justin, Carla, Willette, Charity, Tara, Keisha, Trey, Faultless, mm. No Issues. Georgette Khalil, faultless, no hard issues anymore. Faultless, no, no sugar, no 
high blood pressure no no cancer faultless no 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 bankruptcy no no debt no identifiers of what anybody said about us faultless God, 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 we thank you. Not only are you going to present us faultless, but you're going to be glad about it because your word says you're going to do it exceedingly and abundantly. You're going to do it. You're going to be glad about doing it. God, no, you, you, faultless, no jealousy, no envy, no hate, no backbiting, no overeating, no overshopping, no... family dysfunction faultless no 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 drug abuse no laziness no gluttony no greed faultless before his throne the only reason you're gonna do it God because you're the only wise God not only are you our our savior you are our redeemer you are our lord and God because you're that and you're going to do it right then and it's not just going to be for that day but it's going to be for now and forevermore it's going to be for tomorrow's 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 for tomorrow's 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 God we thank you that you're going to present us faultless that means we'll have no tape no record no no nothing anybody can say about us because you're presenting us faultless before your throne God, this week, have us to walk in the power and the authority of a God who presents us faultless and he knows everything about us. God, help us to walk in the power and the authority that you've given us, God, because nobody can hold anything over our heads because we know one day, God, you're going to present us faultless. Now, God, we, we, we lift up Brother Moore, who's struggling with what doctors say about his brother's condition. We, we, we lift up Steve Vaughn who is struggling with how much and how many days am I going to cry because my mother has now passed on. God, we, we, we lift up members who are out of work. We lift up members who are struggling with contemplating is it all worth it? What is my purpose in life? God, I, I speak healing, not only in this house, God, but I speak healing for those who are worshiping virtually, God. For God, I speak healing for persons who are struggling, not for themselves, but struggling for persons who are close to them as they've been interceding on their behalf and nothing has happened yet. God, God, I, God, I speak healing. God, I, I, as a matter of fact, God, uh, uh, help us to understand, God, to take our hands off the steering wheel because while we're trying to figure it out, you've already worked it out, God. Whatever it is, God, that, that we can trust the good from the hand of God and even the bad. And so, God, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you because you've been better than good 
so many doors you've opened and so many ways you've made so many doors you've opened and so many ways you've made God you've been better than good God so many doors you've opened and so many ways you've made in Jesus name we pray somebody ought to just shout authority you've got it have a blessed week in the Lord